Yeah, and I had to drive three other people also back into Canada in two days. It was not looking good, but let me give you some context here. <laughs> Basically, I'm here in my room today to tell you um, the story of me being a dumb bitch. Um, I got like my entire identity stolen as well as my car keys and my camera on a surf trip in November and honestly it's kind of a hilarious story so I think it's uh, time to just put it out into the universe so everyone can learn from my mistakes. So basically in surf club at UBC um, we go on four trips every single year. We go to Tofino twice, we go to somewhere in California and we go somewhere in Oregon or Washington. So November rolls around and it's time for the Oregon surf trip. The trip coordinators have decided that we're gonna go to Seaside, Oregon. Um, it's off season, it's rainy, it's cold, there aren't gonna be a lot of people there. We'll have the breaks all to ourselves it's gonna be lit so on November 8th at like 5 a.m. we leave for the trip if everybody had a nose. so I'm driving my 2009 Jeep Wrangler and in my car I have Lane Aaron and Kristoff. This was my first like long road trip in my Jeep and so I was pretty nervous but you know things got off to a good start. Um, the driving was smooth and then we got to the American border. So we crossed the border at the Peace Arch and I gave them all our passports. Two people in the car were exchange students and they told us we had to go inside for secondary. So you know I was chilling. I was not too worried about going into secondary. Um, they said that one of the passengers is just missing a certain stamp on their passport that had expired. We had to wait in line for three hours. When we got to the front of the line, um, the border patrol man, the American border patrol man, was asking us so many questions. You know, the regular ones, and then, where are you going? Oh, you're going on a surf trip. Well, did you check the swell? Why didn't you check the swell if you're going on a surf trip? Like, that's a little bit weird, don't you think? Like, blah, blah, blah. Super weird, it was like, oh, this trip's already planned, like we're gonna go surfing even if there's no swell. Got questioned like crazy, um, and then we got the stamp and we were good to go three hours later. So we kept driving down all the way to Oregon, and um, so we spent the first night in Oregon at the house that we rented, it was all good, we were partying, having a good time. Um, and then woke up early the next day ready to go rent some boards and wetsuits because I didn't have mine yet and a couple other people in my car also needed some rentals so we woke up first thing in the morning and then headed to Clean Line Surf Shop. After we had all of our gear we obviously wanted to go surfing so we strapped the boards up on top of the car and then drove down to the beach. Can everybody be surfing like California yeah. um, Just something to keep in mind here is that I do have a soft top Jeep Wrangler, which means the windows literally can just unzip if someone wanted to break into your car. That's going to be a key piece of information for later in the story. So we take everything out of the car, I lock up the car, I um, grab my backpack because it has like my snacks in it and my camera. I wanted to take some pictures of us at the beach and then we suit up in our wetsuits and then head down to the beach, which is like just a two second walk. Um, we decide to leave our bags on the beach because that's what we always do. There's a bunch of people from Surf Club around. It was off season, so the beach was basically empty except for people who were on the trip. There's like a couple families walking their dogs. Um, it was like a super rainy day, so not a lot of people out. So we take our bags, we put our raincoats over top of our backpacks, and then we hide them like right beside a log. So we go out, we surf a bit, we catch some waves, you know, having a good time, and then come in to eat some lunch. So we go, we get our bags, we're eating our lunch, I'm taking some pictures, uh, and then we decide, okay, let's head down like, I don't know, a couple meters um, to try to get into the whatever, past the impact zone over there because where we were it was kind of choppy. So we move all our bags and we go put them beside a different log. We go surfing a little bit more and then I come in for a break, Kristoff comes in for a break, and we go to our rain jackets to, you know, get our bags check to see like I don't know get a snack or something and um, I lift up my rain jacket and my backpack is not there <laughs> and then we lift up uh, Aaron's rain jacket and his backpack isn't there um, Chris often bring a backpack 
So, first thing that sets into my mind is, holy shit, my bag is gone. <laughs> that is really cool. Let's just um, take an inventory of the stuff that was in my backpack. So first we had my passport, we had my Nexus card, my driver's license, my health card, my car keys, my camera. Those are the key items here, okay? Yeah. Let's see. Bryn is very dumb. The thing is, is like I don't remember putting like all of my ID in that backpack. I was pretty sure that I had left it at the house, but I guess I just didn't transfer my bags properly. Anyways, so the first thing I do is I run to my car because my instincts are like, okay, someone has the keys to my car. They, they're gonna take it. Like, why wouldn't you? Um, so I go to my car and it's still there, but of course I don't have the keys, so now I proceed to break into my own car. <laughs> So to do that, honestly, it's not that hard, but I was like in a wetsuit and I was dripping wet and it was super cold. So I like unzipped the back zipper of the car and I'm like hoisting myself in feet first. People are walking by like, are you good? And I'm like, yeah, someone just like stole my identity in my backpack, but like it's chilling. Um, so I break into my car and I find oh, the best thing ever. My phone is in the car with my credit card and because I used to have one of those things in the back of your phone that you can put your cards in. So my phone was there with my credit card. And I was like, okay, it's gonna be fine. Um, at this point, Aaron has come back in from the ocean and he's also, we've told him that his bag was stolen. Luckily, I mean, he had an expensive jacket in there and stuff, but luckily he had like no ID or something like that inside. The first thing I actually do on my phone is I text the surf club group chat. I'm like, yo, what up? Like, is this some sort of prank? Did someone take our stuff from the beach just because we're dumb and like we left it there? And everyone's like, nope. And then it starts to settle in that, um, I f***ed up. <laughs> um, so I'm messaging um, <laughs> my family group chat. Um, and my brother is saying, dot, 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 don't leave your shit unattended. I will make fun of this for you forever. And I was like, well, this is really helpful. So, <laughs> uh, he was just joking. Well, obviously I was kind of freaking out. So I called my dad and I was like, yo, what am I supposed to do? And so he's telling me all the steps. Um, by this time, a lot of people from Surf have come down to the beach to help search the beach. I also searched the beach, but I was super sketched out to leave my car there in case someone came back and stole it. Which I later was like, why would someone like steal the car? Because that's so much easier to like trace. But I was freaking out at the time, okay? So we're searching the beach and I'm just gonna, here, let me, let me draw um, a nice diagram of how everything was set up. Here is my amazing diagram of how this was set up. So these are some buildings, like some condos, some hotels, some stores. And this is the road. Um, I was parked right here. This is the ocean. There's like a lot of like brush and like grass area. And this is the first spot that we had our bags and we literally moved them two meters over, okay? Geez, so we were searching garbage um, cans around because I was like, maybe they just took the camera and then left my ID, which is like the nice thing to do, you know? Like take what you're gonna pawn off and then give me what I need. But no, there was nothing in any of the bushes. There's nothing in any of the garbage cans. So then I'm like, okay, time to call the police. So I call the Seaside Police Department who, they suck, okay? And I call them and I tell them what's going on and they're like, okay, we'll get back to you. Meantime, I'm trying to figure out how am I gonna get my car like back to the Airbnb because I don't wanna just leave it here in case someone does come back for it. So um, I call my dad and I'm like, yo, like how am I supposed to move this car without the keys? And he's like, oh, the steering system locks so you can't push it. So I'm like, great, I can't push it. And also I don't have keys to drive my car back to Canada. Like that's a key thing. Like I drove three people to Oregon and I need to drive us back in two days. Um, and I have no keys for my car. So I call CAA. Keep in mind I'm in the US, but I call CAA, the Canadian one. And I'm like, what up, I'm in Oregon and my bag got stolen and I have no keys and I have no ID or driver's license or my CAA card help. And they're like, okay, we'll transfer you to AAA. So I call AAA and I'm talking to this girl and she's like, okay, I'm gonna see if I can call some tow truck companies and then see if any of the tow, tow truck companies can make you a new key. I'm like, okay, sweet. And she calls me back and she says, yeah, since you have no ID um, and somebody might have your keys, no one wants to take your car in case someone comes and steals it. And also no one can take your car without ID of any sort or a police report. So I'm like, oh, great. So I called the Seaside Police Department and I said, hey, I need a police report ASAP because um, I need to get new keys made for my car and I need to go back into Canada and they're gonna need that since I have no ID. And they said, 
Oh, sorry, the sheriff's not in town. It's gonna take us like three to five days to make a police report. And I was just there like, I have nothing. I, I need to go home. Like, I have to drive people home. That was not good. Um, yeah, anyways, so no ends up happening. Let me draw you a new diagram. So basically, even though we thought my car couldn't be pushed, Aaron has an idea. He says we're gonna push it anyways. And so we take my car, which is over here, if you remember from this diagram. My car's over here, and we push it, like, honestly, like, 10 blocks with the help of some other people from Surf, all the way back to our Airbnb, which is over here. Um, and we hide it in the garage because I'm like, okay, well at least if they want the car, if they want to break into the car, they're not going to be able to see it. So then I go back into the Airbnb and I am just freaking out. I don't know what to do. Um, so I start trying to call like, the consulate and um, like just all this stuff, trying to figure out how I'm supposed to get back into Canada. Then I realize, I'm like, wait a second, I worked in a hostel um, last summer and they made me email them a copy of my passport. So I was like, sweet, Bryn, you got this. So I started scrolling through my email and I found a photocopy of my passport, which was sweet. But that still didn't solve the issue of having keys for my car because, yeah, I had a passport, but I had no way to like, get back into Canada. So, so then uh, Stu from Surf Club drove me to the police department and I explained to them my story again and I told them, hey, is there any way that I can get this police report faster? And they said no. And I was like, what do you mean? So I was freaking out. So I called the tow truck company again and I was like, look, I know that this is a really weird scenario, but I promise I'm not trying to steal this car. I have the registration and I have a photocopy of my passport. Is that good? And the man said yes. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell me that earlier? Well, I'll be gone for the summer. We're on safari to stay. That's fine. And I start to chill out. I have my passport and the tow truck well, not the tow truck. The locksmith is coming tomorrow. So that night I chill. Um, we party, life is good. The next morning I wake up, this locksmith comes and it literally just took him two hours and he just made new keys for my car with the chip in it and everything and the car started, it could drive. It was literally insane. I did not know that you could do that. It was 200 bucks just to like get new keys. Not that bad and you know, everything was looking up. So yeah, then everything was fine basically except for the fact that I had like no ID and like my camera and my amazing footage was all stolen so that kind of sucked. But yeah, then we decided, well we decided, at the end of the trip we drove back to Vancouver and then on the way back we stopped at Trader Joe's of course and um, one of my passengers did not know that you can't bring like a certain amount of alcohol back over the border so we had like six bottles of wine in my car which you're not allowed to do if you have people in your car who are under 21 and we had two people over 21 and two people under 21 and so that was fun and so we get to the border and I show them the photocopy of my passport and the three other people in my car aren't Canadian citizens and they say so like do you guys have your study permits and none of them had their study permits so here we are at the border, me with a photocopy of my passport, my three passengers with their foreign passports and no study permits, and this woman is not having it. And also we have six bottles of wine that we hope they don't search our car. So then we have to go inside, of course, and honestly, the people on the Canadian side were so much nicer. We were in and out of there 15 minutes. They just like looked me up, I guess, and let us go. And that was all good, and we made it back to Canada, so that was really fun. But honestly, it doesn't stop there because then I had to go get a new driver's license and a new health card which was super easy in Ontario because like I went I did it over Christmas but the issue was that like I had to get a new passport and then when I tried to do that you need um some sort of ID and I didn't have any of my ID at that point so I was like okay I'll just use my birth certificate and then you know what <sighs> lost my birth certificate so then I had to wait two months to order a new birth certificate and then I had to wait another month to order my passport which they told me that if I did anything like this again to my passport that they might not give me another one me yeah, and then it was fine and then I went on another surf trip to Santa Cruz like the week after I got my new passport and life was good honestly I was really bitter about it for a while because I was just really mad at like whoever stole it for stealing everything and not just taking my camera because like that's obviously what they wanted for. My wallet was empty in there. I didn't have any debit or credit cards. It was just my IDs. And it just really sucks, you know? Like, 
what did I do to deserve this? Like, I truly do believe whatever goes around comes around, so that, yeah. But you know, what I realized afterwards is that, like, Seaside kind of has a big homeless population that I did not know about. Some lessons you guys can learn from this story. One, don't leave your shit on the beach or don't leave any valuable shit on the beach. I mean, that's common sense, but you know, I just believe in the kindness of people a little bit too much, apparently. Number two, leave your IDs all in separate places so if one gets stolen, you still have like three other ones. <laughs> The next piece of advice is honestly, if something like this happens, just chill. I think I might have cried one time throughout this whole thing. I was only mostly overwhelmed that I had to drive all my friends home on Monday and I had no keys to my car. Um, honestly, now it's just kind of a joke. Um, a lot of people make fun of me for it because it is kind of hilarious and really stupid, but anyways, I thought that would be a fun story to tell you guys, so yeah, just don't be an idiot when you go surfing like me. I hope you guys enjoyed my story and make sure to subscribe for more ridiculous content. Bye!